So this is a lecture of CE uh, concerned with uh, uh, linear quadratic optimal control. And uh, uh, in the previous in previous lectures, we have been considering the problem of let me show you the slide. So the problem of optimizing a cost in which you penalize the square of the output. So you have a compromise between keeping the power of the output small and uh, with the power with the other objective being uh, keeping the power of the manipulated variable small. And you know that this is, these are uh, conflicting uh, compromises. And uh, you know that one possibility is to solve a Riccati equation. And uh, from the result of the Riccati equation, you compute um, vector of feedback gains. And then your optimal controller is a constant feedback of the state, even by these gains computed from the Riccati equation. But then I told you, OK, uh, actually, we are placing the poles of A minus BK in some, some positions. What are these positions? And the positions are obtained in this way. So you compute this polynomial, where A and B are, uh, A is the denominator of the open loop transfer function and B is the numerator of the open loop uh, transfer function. So A is related to the poles, to the open loop poles, and B is related to the open loop zeros. And you, for, you form this polynomial delta made of A of S, A of minus S plus one over rho. Rho, remember, is the weight on the manipulated variable, B of S, B of minus S. And uh, uh, after you have this polynomial, this is a polynomial of degree 2n because a has degree n. So you have the product of a, a of s by a of minus s. So it's degree 2n. And uh, furthermore, if you have uh, a root in some position, you will have a symmetric root. Uh, with respect to the vertical axis, the imaginary axis. So this uh, polynomial has two, has n roots that are stable and n roots that are unstable. And uh, uh, the optimal roots are the stable ones. So you compute all the roots and you just take the stable ones. And this is, uh, these are the optimal roots. So you design, uh, you design then uh, a state feedback uh, where you place the closed loop poles at these optimal roots. And this is, a, this is an alternative to computing the uh, gains, the feedback gains with using the Riccati equation. And in the previous lecture, we gave us, a simple example of a first order system in which we applied both techniques and of course the result was the same. Now we can explore this a little bit further to have an idea of what happened to the optimal roots when you change this weight raw on the manipulated variable. This is the so-called this is the so-called root, root square locus or symmetric root locus and it's based on, on this fact. Now, uh, both the optimal and the symmetric of the optimal root satisfy this equation. So this delta polynomial equal to zero. Now you can rewrite this expression in this other form, one divided by rho times a transfer function. And this transfer function is the product of the original open loop transfer function times the open loop transfer function, but with S replaced by minus S. And uh, in this form, uh, you can apply the uh, rules of the so-called uh, root locus. So root locus is a 
technique that you have studied in the basic course of control, in which you had some gain, in this case, the gain is one divided by rho, uh, multiplying a transfer function equals to minus one. And when you have it in this way, you have uh, roots that allow you to qualitatively uh, sketch the position of the uh, of the roots of the above equation written in this way. Now, uh, you can also use a computer program to give values to raw and computer roots of the of delta of s. Okay, so you give uh, you this is a polynomial equation, and there are very efficient uh, software packages to compute the roots of a polynomial. Uh, so you can apply one of these techniques in MATLAB. You can use the RL uh, function to come to plot the locus of s when you change rho. So the locus of the closed loop poles, optimal poles, when you change rho. Uh, you can also take some, uh, you can also uh, take some, some uh, insight, take some insight, uh, for extreme values of rho, for instance. Suppose that rho is very big. If rho is very big, this other term is uh, absent from the equation. And you just have a of s, a of minus s. So this is the equation. So this means that if the plant is open loop stable, you just, the optimal poles for very large rho are just the original ones, a, a of s, the roots of a of s. Now, suppose that you have one pole or in open loop, which is not stable, then you would replace this uh, unstable pole by its symmetric. So uh, the corresponding optimal pole would be its symmetric. Uh, the fact that if the plant is open loop, uh, if the fact that the plant is open loop stable and the gain is zero, it's quite uh, uh, natural because if uh, rho is very big, the term associated to control is very important. So if you do nothing, you are reducing the contribution of the integral of u square to zero or close to zero. So um it's natural uh, the, the the optimal it's natural that the optimal poles are just open loop poles now the interesting thing is that if you have an open loop unstable pole the optimal corresponding pole is a symmetric so the uh, solution of the lq problem always stabilizes your plan now Let's think. Let's think of what happens when the row is very small. When row is very small, then it's the term of a s a of minus s that vanishes because you can multiply everything by row, and you have row a s a minus s plus b s b minus s equal to zero. So the first term you can neglect. And you have b of s, b of minus s. Now, if all the zeros, that is to say, if all the roots of b are on the left hand side, then the optimal position of the poles will be to cancel the zeros. If you have, usually you will have more poles than zeros, so you will, you will place the other ones at infinity. But this is this is something that comes from the uh, rules of the root locus. Uh, if you have a non-minimum phase zero, that is to say zero on the right, then the optimal position for the pole will be symmetric with respect to the zero. Okay? 
So again, you, you will not have pole zero cancellations when you have a non-minimum phase zero. And we have discussed before that having cancellations of poles and zeros, you, you can't go there and just cut, cut because uh, there is a transient associated to the an internal mode, to an internal state that is still there, but does not uh, appear from the input and output. It's associated to some initial conditions. And what happens is that the Z, if the zeros are stable, that is to say are on the left hand side, then you cancel it. Okay, you will have a transient probably if you have some initial conditions, uh, then you will have a transit that goes to zero. That, that is acceptable. If the zero is on the right, then you don't cancel it. You place the optimal pole at a symmetric position with respect to it. So again, you will have something which is internally stable. So this algorithm of uh, control design that amounts to minimize the quadratic cost function is, is actually a good algorithm in what concerns the stabilization, both from the external point of view and the internal point of view, that is to say, uh, the problems that you might have when you have all zero cancellations. And usually this is uh, taken as a first iteration uh, when you want to design a controller, you can design first, uh, <coughs> sorry, a linear quadratic controller, and then you uh, probably will improve it because a linear quadratic controller uh, can have a lot, for instance, of overshoot, and this is undesirable. So uh, you can have a first stabilizing con controller using so solving the LQ problem, and then use some other method that we are not going to speak. There are many methods for that to optimize, to optimize uh, and improve this first uh, controller. Any question about this? Let me give you an example. Suppose that you have, that you have, uh, this uh, this linear plant described according to a, a state model and you compute the transfer function okay you can compute the transfer function you can compute the transfer function e the open loop transfer function using these techniques or using uh, block manipulation methods in this case, it, it would be very easy to solve these equations, take the Laplace transform and uh, compute X or Y of S divided by U of S. It will not be difficult. But uh, if, uh, if you don't want to take that algebra, just use those expressions. So what we have, we have uh, zero at minus one and then S squared minus 0.25 is S plus 0.5 times S minus 0.5. So we have a pair of poles, one at minus 0.5 and another at plus 0.5. So uh, what you do, you have the zero at one, and then you have one pole at minus 0.5 and another pole at minus, uh, plus 0.5. So you had, uh, first you have the singularities that are the mirror reflection of these ones with respect to the imaginary axis. So if you have a zero at point uh, at one, you will have another zero at minus one. If you have a pole at minus 0.5, you will have another pole at 0.5. If you had already one pole at 0.5, then you will you must add another pole at minus 0.5. So these are really double poles here. And then you apply the usual root, the usual rules of uh, uh, 
uh, root locus and you you plot the diagram when uh, one of rho goes to infinity that is between zero and infinity one thing that you should be careful is about the sign because uh, when you write when you write this expression there can be a minus sign that appears here so it is as if uh, one divided by rho as a minus so you should apply the, ru the rules for the k negative how can you decide that well if you remember the rules there are uh, rules based on the phase condition and if you apply them it's okay I mean, there is no, no difficulty about that. Uh, but uh, you can also consider, apply the rules for positive uh, gain and the rules for negative gain and discard the ones that lead to uh, any, LM, any branches over the imaginary axis. You will never have branches over the imaginary axis. So in this case, what happens? Uh, these two poles, they start moving away. And these are actually, according to the rules for negative gain, then uh, you have an entry point here for these two poles. And then one pole comes to the zero and the other pole, go, pole goes to infinity. And the same here, okay? So uh, you can easily, come to the conclusion that according to the rules for negative gain, uh, the parts of the real axis that belong to the root locus are uh, from this zero at one to the right and from this zero to minus one to the left. Remember that for negative, you should have, uh, you should have a even, a number of singularities. So singularities, I mean poles or zeros to your right. So uh, to the right, you have to the right of plus one, you have no singularities, which is considered to be a, a, a even number. Now between the poles and the zero, you have to the right, you have one singularity, the zero. So this between the poles and the zero, it does not belong to the root locus. Then you have two singularities. So it's again, three, three is an even number. So you don't have it. Okay. So in this part, you also don't have it. Then two, two plus two plus one to the right, it's five, it's odd. So uh, this part here up to the zero, you don't have it. Now, at this point, for instance, to the left of minus one, you have one singularity, that's a zero, plus two poles, three, plus two poles, five, plus one, zero, six. So uh, the points to the left of minus one have six singularities, so they belong, okay? And this is the rule for, uh, this is the rule for negative, uh, for negative, um, again if you would apply the rule for positive gain then uh, one of the poles this of these two pairs of poles one of the pole would come to the other they would join at zero one goes up and one goes down over the imaginary axis and this is impossible okay this is impossible so you know that you should that's a practical rule you should use, you must use, uh, in this case, the rule for negative, uh, for negative gain. Of course, this is not an arbitrary thing. It depends on a point, on points over the imaginary axis or the real axis satisfying the uh, phase condition, if you remember well the phase condition. Okay, so, uh, I will not ask you too much uh, when it comes to to the when it comes to the to the exam about root locks the techniques, but I, you should you should uh, re revise this uh, 
rules uh, that you learned in the basic course on control for root locution. In this case, actually, this plot was made with the RL function of uh, MATLAB. So questions? So after all this small talk, what, you, what should you remember? You should remember that you can uh, plot the root locus associated to this expression. And this is nothing more than the uh, equating to zero the Shangletov polynomial and see what happens when one divided by rot changes. Now, one thing is that when rho, when rho decreases, one over rho goes to infinity. And it's like having an infinite game. And you will have uh, poles that go to infinity. So you are widening your bandwidth, the bandwidth of the control system. So having small rho means that your control system will be faster in general. Uh, of course, in this example, for instance, when you have zeros, uh, you, will, you will have this pole that is limited by this zero, but the zero and pole, they cancel. So this would be the optimal poles. Okay, so you, you would end up with a pole which is very close to a zero. When you decrease the gain, the pole is virtually canceled by the zero. And your spin of response is really dependent on this other z pole that goes to infinity. That is to say, by decreasing rho, you are increasing the bandwidth. You are increasing the speed of response of your system. That is something that you should, uh, you should uh, remember. OK, now. Let's speak of another thing, which is the relative stability of the LQ controller. And um, for that, I, I start by considering the usual uh, linear state model. And I defined the Laplace transform of the open loop state transition matrix. Okay, it's, This is something that you know because uh, the state transition matrix is actually the inverse Laplace transform of this quantity. That's the exponential of AT. Now, let's consider the loop gain. The loop gain. So uh, assume that you have uh, your system described by, that you have your system described by the state model. And between x and u, actually, you have si minus a inverse times b. Okay, so in terms of the Laplace transform. Now you multiply x by k and you feed it back. So you can define a loop gain. What is a loop gain? So you have a feedback loop. In this case, it's feedback that results from feeding back the state. And you interrupt the loop here, where, where you have these crosses. Okay, you go there with a scissor and you cut the wire. Okay. And then you multiply all the gains, and all the gains are SI minus A inverse B times K. Okay. So I call this the loop gain L K phi of S B, because this is phi of S. Now, it is possible to prove. The proof is not difficult. It's, you can see it in my book if you want. But it's very long, so I, I will not present it. But the final result is very important. It's a so-called Kalman inequality, or at least a special case of the Kalman inequality. It says that the modulus of 1 plus L of j omega is bigger or equal to 1 for any omega. So you, you do you make S equal to J omega, and you compute L of J omega, okay? So this gives you some complex number, 
and you compute the modules. In this modules, one plus L of J omega is at least one. Okay. Now let's uh, use this result. Let's use this result. Now you can write this the common inequality in a very simple way. Well, you can uh, write one plus L as L plus one, but L plus one is L minus minus one. Okay, so what is this? This is the distance between the point L of J omega and the point minus one. So if you have the complex, complex plane and you have the loop gain, what we are saying is that the loop gain, the distance of the loop gain with respect to point minus one, which is L of J omega minus minus one, this is this length here, the length of this segment here, is always bigger or equal to than one. So the loop gain is outside a circle of radius one centered at minus one. And you can uh, use this fact uh, to take some conclusions about stability. In particular, if you have an open loop uh, stable uh, system, uh, so we, without any pole, any open loop poles on the right complex plane, uh, what happens is that uh, your loop gain will never enter this circle. Okay? It's not this situation. And uh, it will do, it will do, I don't have the picture here, but it's something like this, okay? It, it goes, uh, it goes, the loop gain makes enters. So if you multiply the loop gain by some uh, gain K, then this point will never, because it's at zero, you are multiplying zero by K, it does not move. So you can multiply by very large gains and you will never encircle the point minus one with the, your loop gain. So you have for open loop, open loop stable systems, you will have an infinite uh, gain margin. If you have one loop gain, if you have uh, one um, uh, open loop unstable pole, sorry, then uh, you must encircle once and uh, you can do some examples to see that in this case the loop gain is something like this okay and for lq and the problem comes in reducing the loop gain so in multiplying the loop gain by numbers that are smaller than one so that this point comes and does not encircle minus one because Stability implies that you should encircle the point minus one when you have uh, open loop and stable gain. That's a consequence of the Nyquist stability criterion. And this means that you can multiply this by a factor which is at least 0.5 before reaching minus one. Okay. So you have very good, very good uh, uh, stability margins, in gain margins. For the phase margin, for the phase margin, uh, you see that uh, you will, if you consider this circle of radius one centered at the origin, the phase margin is this arc, is this arc here between your loop gain at this point, where your loop gain, which is this sick line, crosses this circle and minus one, and this is at least 60 degrees, that's the angle, which again is a very good, uh, <coughs> is a very good um, stability margin. So the LQ, the conclusion is that if you feedback the state, if you feedback the state, then your stability margin will be, uh, if, so take uh, open loop stable one will be very good. So infinity uh, gain margin and at least 60 degrees uh, phase margin. Now, suppose 
that you have uh, you, you don't have access to the state and you have to estimate the state. Now, what are the stability margins when you feedback not the state, but an estimate of the state of, obtained with a state estimator? And uh, the situation is completely different. You don't have any warranties, okay? <clears throat> there is a paper in the, in the beginning of the, of the 80s or end of the 90s, maybe 79. And the title is uh, Stability Guarantees or Guarantees on the Stability Margins for the LQG. The LQG is, we are going to see it in a moment, uh, the LQ coupled with an optimized observer. And the abstract was just one line saying there are no. So uh, when you have, uh, when you are feeding back, not the state, but the, but the uh, estimate of the state, then you won't have any warranties on the stability margins. We are going to see in a moment how to solve this problem. Uh, let's, uh, before that, uh, say something about the situation when you have an estimator, but you have noise. So suppose now that you have uh, your process model is our linear state model, but then you have some stochastic uh, signal W. And uh, I'm assuming that this W is, uh, uh, it verifies this property, okay? So the covariance matrix of W is the expectation of W, W transposed, uh, W at T times W transposed at T plus tau is some constant matrix times the Dirac delta of tau. So for tau equal to zero, for tau equal to zero, uh, you have say an infinite value multiplied by K zero. For tau in bigger than zero or different from zero, positive or negative, this is zero. So this is the notion of uh, white noise, vector white noise, in which uh, when you uh, compute this expectation at different time instants, you have no correlation between uh, samples. And uh, this W models disturbances stochastic disturbances that appear that uh, affect the plan. And then you have also this V, which is something similar, but uh, let's uh, suppose that Y is scalar. It could be also a vector, but let's suppose it's scalar. So V is scalar and um, you have observation noise here. This depends on the noise on the sensors. Okay, so this is a model that takes into consideration that you have some disturbances unknown that are unknown, W, and some sensor noise that is also unknown, V. You only know the, its characteristics. So uh, you would like to have a state estimator that verifies these two quantities. The expectation of the true value of the state minus the estimate at each time t is zero. And then you want to minimize the energy of the estimation error. So this is the Euclidean norm, the square the Euclidean norm of the error between the true state and the estimated state. Now, uh, if you just impose the first the first uh, condition, uh, it is possible to show that the solution is, uh, ops is a, it's a, has the structure of an observer. So X hat is an observer such as we have studied that. It's a, a synthetic observer or state estimator in the form that we have uh, studied them. So a replica of the system plus the reinjection of uh, the reinjection of 
the output error. Now, if you want to minimize the energy of the error, then this corresponds to a particular value of L, okay? And this particular value of L works like this. So uh, remember that L affects the poles of the, of the observer. The observer is a filter and you are, you are uh, adjusting the poles of the filter. So the bandwidth of the filter. So what happens? Uh, suppose that you start with a small bandwidth. Uh, you have some noise that passes in these bandwidths. And since this is white noise, you have the same amount of noise in all frequency bands. And um, if the bandwidth of the filter of the observer is very small, then uh, not all the important frequencies that allow x hat to be close to x will pass. Now you go on increasing the bandwidth and more frequencies of noise pass, but more frequencies of the state x also pass. So x hat becomes closer and closer to x. There is a moment in which all the important uh, frequencies in, that you think that uh, made the signal X have already passed, okay? From that moment on, if you go on increasing the bandwidth of the filter, you will gain nothing because all the relevant signals that allow you to reconstruct X, the, the, the frequency components are already there. And, but on the contrary, for the noise, you are always increasing the noise power that passes when you, it's proportional to the band. Okay, so when you minimize this energy, this error energy, what actually you are doing is to select the uh, bandwidths. And when, when I say select the bandwidths, is select the poles of the observer such that you optimize this signal to noise ratio. <clears throat> and this is then uh, you, you can show that uh, the result, I'm not going to prove it. It can be proved in different ways, obtained in different ways. In, in particular, reducing the estimation problem to uh, optimal control problem. That's one of the possibilities. And you end up with, well, it's not a surprise to say, I, I told you that it's a searcher of the Observer, so a replica of the system driven by the injection of the output error, y minus c x hat times some gain. Now, this is corresponds to solving this first part of the, of the problem. Now, the second part is an op, a particular L0 that imposes the poles of the error estimates of a minus. L0C and actually in such a way that you want to optimize the, you optimize the power or, or the energy of the error for all the operation of the filter. And this corresponds to having L0 given by this expression. Well, C is the C of the model, Y equal to CX. Uh, R0, R0 is the covariance matrix of the observation noise, okay? So, <clears throat> you can see that uh, R0 appears here in inverted. So this means that if you have very little observation noise, you can open the bandwidth. L0 grows and the poles of A minus L0 will also uh, increase. So the bandwidth will increase. The filter becomes faster. If you have little noise, you can open the bandwidth. You will open the bandwidth. If you don't have any noise, then L0 will be infinity. So for this problem to make sense, you must have some noise. 
and sigma satisfies this equation, which is an algebraic equation. It's a quadratic equation because you have sigma times a null matrix times sigma. It's symmetric. It's positive uh, semi-definite solution, semi-definite uh, matrix, and so satisfies this equation, which is uh, an algebraic Riccati equation. So it's quite um, similar to the one that we considered for the control, but it's different. Now, the Riccati equation depends on the process noise covariance Q0 and the sensor noise covariance R0. So remember Q0 appears here at the process noise W and R0 appears here at characterizing the statistics of the sensor noise. <coughs> now, uh, the optimal solution now becomes a concatenation of the so-called uh, common Busey filter, which is what we have explained before. It's this optimized observer is the common Busey filter. And then you design the controller K in the usual way for A and B. So K uh, depends only on A and B. It's places the poles, the eigenvalues of A minus BK. And you have a separation theorem that is valid for this theorem as well. Okay. Now you have some uh, stochastic formulation and this is the so-called linear quadratic Gaussian. Gaussian because I'm assuming that the noise is Gaussian. The noise processes that appear are Gaussian. You can also think of this of this uh, filter as propagating as propagating x hat and sigma, and these are the estimate x hat are the uh, mean value of uh, the probability density function of the state given the observations. So you can. Uh, you you could uh, derive these uh, equations using uh, the Bayes law for conditional pro uh, probabilities and characterize uh, your state by a probability density function. And then you would like to compute the uh, probability the probability density function of the state given the observations and if the system is linear and the observations and the observation noise and sensor noise are Gaussian then <clears throat> the density of the state given the observations is also a Gaussian function and x hat is the mean value and sigma is the covariance matrix okay so actually you are propagating these two numbers you are propagating these two numbers, x hat and sigma. Sigma is actually a constant because this is a steady state filter. And uh, uh, you can give an, a probabilistic interpretation to them. If your uh, dynamics were not linear, in general, uh, the Gaussianity is lost. So you cannot just propagate two numbers. Actually, there is no exact solution in which you propagate a finite number of variables, except in very special cases. But this is another story that uh, is not part of this course. Okay, you have Busey, uh, sorry, Rudolf Kalman, the, the person that um, formulated these ideas in discrete time. And uh, for the continuous time, you worked with uh, Richard Bussy, who was working on the continuous time problem. Uh, I, I was privileged because when I was about your age, I, I met and I had several contacts with uh, Richard Bussy. 
and later, much later on, uh, after more than 20 years, I found him because he was in an evaluation committee of, uh, in Asia. And I had to, I had some the opportunities to speak again with him. Uh, and he was a, a quite, uh, quite polite person. The opposite of Rudolf Kalman. Kalman uh, got the fame, he, he died, he died uh, two or three years ago. But uh, he was famous for being a very rude person, very, he was making all sorts of disconsiderations to everybody and so on. No, no one liked Kalman, uh, but uh, he was a giant of, of systems and control theory. Okay, so let's make the synthesis. Suppose that you have your Suppose that you have your stochastic system, so your state model driven by white noise as process noise and also as sensor noise. So the optimal solution now uh, is made of two parts. You have the estimator or the common filter, the optimized estimator, okay? It's a, a, a synthetic observer in which you optimize the vector of gains L0 according to these formulas that depend on an algebraic weak equation. And then you have a optimal controller designed as if you had no observer, okay? So it places the poles of A minus BK and the gain depend on P, which is the solution, it's a positive definite solution of this other Riccati, algebraic Riccati equation. So uh, you have to solve this and you solve it separately according to a separation theorem. Questions? So now you know what is the, this is a so-called solution of the LQG problem. Uh, you can also compute the transfer function using the formulas that we know for uh, a regulator, for a controller that is made of an observer in the feedback gain. And you can, you can uh, uh, compute the closed loop transfer function and see what happens when you change parameters and so on. Now, I told you already that when we have an observer or a common filter, that's a weak point in the design because uh, the, if you have access to the state direct, <coughs> if you have the direct access to the state, then uh, you have very good stability margins. But if you instead uh, use as feedback, not the state, but the estimate of the state, you have no warranties on the stability margins. Now, what happens was that uh, someone uh, in the end of the 80s, maybe beginning of the 90s, uh, had this idea. This covariance matrices that appear in the common filter that characterize the noise, the observation noise and the process noise, they are usually very difficult to, to find in a practical situation. So instead of having them, I'm going to adjust them. So these become uh, design parameters. Instead of being a consequence of getting data and analyzing the data and characterizing the noise, I'm going just to decide their values. And I'm going to decide their values such as to recover the loop gain of the original linear quadratic design, that is to say, of the design in which we feedback the, the, the state. This is the so-called loop transfer recovery, LTR, okay? so. Uh, in, L, in LQG, LTR, use the LQG formulas. But now the 
R0 and Q0 parameters, so the covariance, uh, the covariance uh, matrices, are no longer obtained from the noise, but you adjust them at your will, such as to approximate the loop gain of the LQ that we know that has very good stability uh, properties. And um, one, one possibility is this, if uh, your process, if your GS, GS is a transfer function associated to X dot equal to AX plus BU, Y equals to C, X, so uh, the transfer function of the open loop, if it is a minimum phase, then you select R0 equal to one, and when, if you select Q0 equals to some parameter Q square times BB transpose B is of the state model. If you make Q grow, then your loop, the loop gain that you get approximates the loop gain of the LQ system. That is to say, you are going to approximate a situation in which you have good stability margins. <coughs> Again, I'm not going to prove this result. Now, let me uh, finalize by presenting uh, an example. Uh, and the example is a double integrator. So you have uh, two variables, x is one, x1 is a position, and x2 is a, a velocity. This could be the model of a ball that rolls in a rail and for small displacements because otherwise you have a nonlinear term. Uh, but let's consider it is a double integrator. So your transfer function, if you compute the transfer function, it's not a surprise that it is one divided by a square, double integrator. And you, you uh, first design an LQ controller. So you assume that you have access to X1 and X2, and you want to design K1 and K2 by minimizing this quadratic cost. So what you do, you pick up your algebraic uh, Riccati equation for the control problem, and you solve it. Usually uh, you, you don't solve it by hand, you solve it with software. The LQR, uh, function in MATLAB, for instance. And uh, then use the gain, the expression, to compute the gain as a function of the solution of the Riccati equation P. Okay? And you get these values. Now, <clears throat> you can also compute the, close, the resulting closed loop poles which are the eigenvalues of A minus B, uh, BK. Okay, I put the LQ to, to stress that this is the, uh, to, to stress that this is the gains obtained, obtained with the LQ controller. And if you compute these eigenvalues, then I, I suggest that you complete all the computations in the intermediate steps you end up with these two, a pair of complex conjugate balls. So the conclusion is that your closed loop system is stable as we expected with a, a, a damping coefficient of 0 0.7, 707. And you have this type of, of response to uh, uh, a step. Now, if you look at the loop gain, you compute the loop gain as k si minus a minus one b, l, l, which is si minus a minus one b, is nothing more than multiplying the transfer function times <coughs> k1 plus sk2. And it's this function. So you see here the 
circle of radius one centered at minus one, and you see that your loop gain does not enter, does not enter the loop gain. So you have a phase margin, which is uh, very close to 60 degrees, is the angle, the angle of a circumference, which is not shown here, it's a little bit more. And an infinite, uh, an infinite uh, gain margin because the gain margin is seen by picking up this point and see when do you encircle, when you do you touch minus one by multiplying by a gain. And since this is zero, you would require an infinite gain to bring the, the point at zero to the point at minus one. Now, let's now consider the situation in which we have noise. So you add to our model W1 and W2. And to our observation model, you add some V. Okay. And the uh, covariance matrices are Q0 and R0. Now, the block uh, diagram now has these noise values, W1, W2, and V. And let's assume that Q0 and R0 have these values. So uh, what do you do? You do a replica of your system. You do a replica of your system. So you had one divided by S, one divided by S. So have them here. Now you re-inject L1, you re-inject the output error through L1 and L2. So these are the common gains, common filter gains. And then uh, you feed back the estimate, sorry, this is not X1 and X2, but it's X1 hat and X2 hat. There are some hats here missing. So uh, you multiply by the gains, you multiply by the gains. Uh, of computed according to the LQ design that we did before. So this is the uh, block diagram of our controller. The square, the rectangle, the dotted rectangle represents the plants and all the rest is in your computer. It's the block diagram of your controller. Now, to compute the gains of the observer, you consider the Riccati equation for the filter and you solve it. You solve it. Uh, you can use, uh, you can solve it manually as we did before. That's a good exercise. Or you can use the uh, function LQE in MATLAB. And then you compute L from the solution of the Riccati equation using this formula. Now, the transfer function of the compensator uh, uses the same gains for the controller, KLQ, but now the L is different, is this one. So you get a different uh, transfer function of the, of the controller. Uh, and of course, a different tensor function of the controller. And of course, of the of the closed loop system. And if you compute the poles of the closed loop system, you get the poles of the that you would get with LQ plus the poles of the filter error. That's a separation theory. So. Uh, these are the eigenvalues of A minus LC, A, A minus BK, and these are the eigenvalues of A minus L0C. Now, if you, I don't have the response, I've canceled it. Uh, but if you, if you look at the, at both designs, this is not much uh, significant. 
but uh, uh, if you compare, the, for instance, the main gain margins, LQ is big as bigger uh, stability margins. Okay. What is more interesting is that if you apply the formula, now you, you say, I, I don't matter about these values. What I'm going to assume in the design is that I'm going to, let's go back, I'm going to use this formula. So I'm assuming that R0 is one and Q0 is parameterized in this way. And I consider the different values for Q growing. When this small Q grows, I'm a I am expected to approximate the loop gain of the LQ. And you can see this here. So the sick line, this is the gain of the LQ and the sick line this is the phase of the LQ. And uh, here you have different values for small Q, one, 100 and 1,000. And as you see, you are approximating the LQ over a wider, uh, frequency band, both in the uh, gain and in the frequency. Okay, so you are approximating the sick line by these thin lines that corresponds to the LQG LTR versions. So uh, the conclusion is to design to design a filter or a controller in the stochastic case. Uh, you apply this LQG regulator equations for the estimator and for the controller. The estimator is the Kalman filter. And then for the matrices R0 and Q0, instead of identifying the noise, which is quite difficult, what you do is you apply, for instance, these uh, expressions with a Q, which is large enough. So that's all for today. That's what I wanted to speak about for today. So we have been seeing things about, first it was the root square locus, then robustness properties of the LQ, uh, the LQG, the situation in which you have uh, stochastic disturbances and stochastic noise. And finally, the way to properly design the observer uh, when you have noise by adjusting the assumed noise variances. Questions? Will there be class on Friday? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I, will, I will send you the, I will send you the,